Okay, let's deal with manipulating an object um, in Blender. So let's just deal with the Q for this example. Let's just deal with how to name an object. Simply click on object, press F2, and then you can a dialog box appears and in here you can just type in the new name that you want, whatever it is, propeller head. I'm a bit of a propeller head. Right, so just propeller head. And that's the same with the cameras. You can um, click on the, a camera and you can, again, F2 and you can rename it. The other cool thing you could do with an actual camera is, I'll, again, I'll touch on this a little bit later in uh, another part of the tutorial, is you can actually manipulate the, the focal point, the zoom point, and that's your zoom. Yeah, we're gonna touch on that a little bit uh, more in the future. And then you've got your camera, I mean your light. And again, by pressing F2, you can change the name of the light. Okay, so that's that's, that's covered. So F2 is a really cool way of uh, changing the name. You can also change the name in here um, by double clicking and then just, you can change the name, whatever. Um, but I usually use just F2, nice and simple. But you can keep uh, tabs on your objects in here and your scene collections. Okay, so let's move on. So, if we go to edit mode, the scenario changes here, and you know what you can do with changes here. Now, let's. I'm going to deal with the most important icons here. This icon here is called a vertex. Your vertex icon. This is your edge icon, and this is your face icon. Basically. A 3D object is made up a number of a number of vertices, which are these, and then they're connected together with edges, which are those. So you've got the vertex, which are those dots, the edges, and then you've got the faces. Yeah. And that's what a 3D object is made up of. So if we want to edit a vertex all we need to do is click on the vertex that we want to edit in in um, blender and then we just can move using your your arrow selections if you want to move an edge again very simply click on that edge and then you can just move it anywhere you want and if you want to click on a face again yeah that's the the you know if you want to if you were creating an object this is where you, this is the very basics of how you, you would then manipulate your object to make it look the way you want it to look. Right. You can also rotate a face. And you can scale a face. And you can obviously just move a face if you want. You can also um, do the same with um, edges. So you can rotate an edge. So this is pretty cool. Let's just add an object. Now you add an object is simply by going to the add icon here, mesh, and then you've got the selection of I, um, objects you can, you can add. Um, I'll just quickly go through all of them. So you've got your plane and you can obviously scale it up and down. You got your cube again. We can scale it up and down. You got your circle, which is just a, a path. Um, we'll go into paths later. You got a UV sphere. Now the UV sphere, you can change the number of um, segments on it. So if we we can reduce it. Or increase it now the reason why you increase or or decrease your segments your vertices or your faces basically is um, computational I can't say the word but computer power basically um, I don't know if you remember back in old days you got games like Zelda and whatever blah 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 I mean, you obviously you got Zelda the new Zelda series but if you notice with the older games 
they were very straight edges and straight lines. The reason why they were straight edges and straight lines is to do with computer power. The less faces that the computer has to deal with, the easier it is to throw away around the graphics. But obviously nowadays with faster GPUs, etc., cetera, um, faster computers, um, they can throw around um, more, more vertices and more faces. So the, the, I mean, obviously you can make your retro style type games um, or animations, etc., to to replicate that. Or, for example, my my animation that I made, um, battery pack. If you haven't seen it, check it out. Um, I specifically made it lower polygon because my my computer I've got a, a, at the moment. I'm, I'm building a new rig. But the rig I've got at the moment is a Z600 workstation with a, a 1050 Ti. And it's basically, a 1050 Ti is kind of a low to mid range a graphics card. So when I made this small uh, animation, I, I, I bear that in mind. So, and that goes with when you create your projects, think about what rig you've got and don't exceed your you know try and create a project that fits in with the rig you've got because if you go right i'm going to make this super realistic project with these you know characters with thousands hundreds of thousands of polygons etc and you you're you're rocking a rig like mine then you ain't going to get very far in the project anyway i'm going slightly off on the tangent let's move on so let's delete that and let's go through the others so you've got add and then you go uh you got your icosphere and again, you can change the subdivisions. And then you've got the cylinder. Again, you can change it here with the cylinders. So it's getting smoother. And then you've got your cone. Again, you can change it. And then torus. And again, you can change that. Okay, let's um, manipulate this object a little bit more now. So basically, if we clicked on this object and went to edit mode, you could then, um, this row of icons appear here. Now, if you wanna see what they actually do, you can just click on, click on the side of it and then a little arrow up here, just drag it out. And then you've got these, the names of what it does. Now, for example, the extrude, the way you can either click on extrude, or you can just click on, say a face, because we're gonna just extrude a face, click on a face, press E. E is basically the same as extrude region. Press E, and then you can extrude the region. Again, press E, extrude it. You can click on any face you want. And then you've got inset faces. So if we click on inset faces, again, so click on the face. And then if we just drag the corner of this object here, it's created another face inside it. So then if I was to hit E again, I could extrude in. Yeah. So let's do that again. And then press E. And then you got bevel. Now bevel is is uh, a bit fiddly, but it's pretty cool. So say for example, I clicked an edge, and then I hit bevel, and then I dragged it. You got this. Uh, it creates a bevel. And then also this little icon here appears, and this this allows you to have more segments in your bevel. So. You can add more or less. You can get nice smooth edges. It's pretty cool. Play around with it. There's all different features in here. Now you've got your loop cut. Now the loop cut's pretty cool as well. The loop cut allows you to basically create a cut in your objects. So when I go over it, see it's, it's come up this, this this yellow kind of icon here. So if I click on it, I can also drag. So, so you see that it's created a cut now. Let's create another one. Let's create another cut. When I click off of it, 
press return. When you click off of it, off the object, it'll show you where it is. So that's your, your, your loop cuts. Just play around with it, you get the hang of it. Okay. Then you've got your knife cut tool. Now the knife cut tool is you can just buy, say for example, I just wanted to slice it. If I go click down here, there, there. These are basic modeling techniques. You know, well, as I say, we're gonna get into it when we, when we, we model the character a bit later in the series. But for the time being, I'm just giving you the, the basics. So now if I was to select these, just these faces here, excuse me. And then if I just press E, you can then extrude it in. Okay, so that's just the, the basics of manipulating objects. Now you can take this to a whole different level. You got they've got this hard ops um, add-on that you can get. I've not used it before, but apparently I've heard that it's very good. I, I I will have to play around with it. And then you've got your your box cut. I think it's made by the same guys. So maybe do a Google, Google that. Do a search for box cut for hard operations. They're they're really good for basically hard surface modeling. Is um, say for example you're into a car making cars or making robots and you want your that's what they called hard surface modeling um organic modeling is obviously you know more natural type of objects me personally and i'm going to be uploading some tutorials when i do it organic shapes if i it, i i try and um, sculpt them by hand and then um load them in so basically scan them scan them in and then um use those organic models i just feel it's good to mix the the mediums of traditional and normal 3d okay so that ends the this section of the tutorial um we're going to move on to the next series in a bit okay